um, yeah, good that some of you got your exams coming up, so hopefully this will be very uh, helpful, okay? Uh, so what are we going to do in today's um, webinar? We are going to uh, have a look at the structure for describing the process. We're going to look at the kind of language, the grammar and the vocabulary that the examiners are looking for um, and hopefully answer all of your questions. Oh, Dinesh, 1st of February, that's in two days. Best of luck. Um, yes, computer-based test or written test. If you're doing the academic module, then this is going to be relevant to you. Okay. Um, hi, Pedro. How are you? So let's start by just having a general look. Um, so this is the sample question that we are going to work with today. Okay. Um, so you can have a quick look at that. So we're looking at the production of cement and then followed by the production of concrete. Okay. So um, if we have a quick look, so in this type of task, you're given a diagram. Can be man-made production like this one, but it can also be a natural production. Um, such uh, it can be, for example, the water cycle or the carbon cycle, um, the life cycle of a um, of a bee or some kind of insect. Uh, but in this case, we're having a look at a man-made process. Okay, um, not sure what you mean, MM. Um, if you can explain that a bit more. Uh, so, um, as you probably know, task one, minimum of 150 words. There is no maximum, but, you know, to be honest, you don't really need to write more than 150. If you write just 160 or 170, something like that, okay? Um, you're advised to keep it to 20 minutes to leave yourself um, 40 minutes for the task two. The task two is worth double the marks of the task one. So it is really, really important that you do spend that time on the essay, okay? And try and keep your task one to 20 minutes, all right? Um, so there's two main tasks you have to do here. You have to summarize the key information and you have to talk about the detail, okay? So we'll have a look at how you do that. This is task one, Natilla. The task two is always an essay. So this is a task one, which is sometimes a chart, sometimes a table, but um, it can also be a process or a map, yeah, which are some of the different things that we look at in different uh, webinars, okay? Um, so if we have a look at this sample, let's have a look at it and understand it first, okay? Now this one is not too complicated, but sometimes you do get quite complex systems that are being described. So it is worth taking a couple of minutes, just have a look at it, make sure you understand it first before you start writing. Okay, because if you start and then you're trying to think about what actually is going on, you know, it's, it's not going to go well. So take a bit of time right at the beginning, think about what it is, follow the process, get a good idea, and then you can start. Okay, um, so yes, here we're looking at the production of cement uh, and then how that's used to produce concrete. Okay, um, so what kind of process are we looking at? Are we looking at a linear process or a cyclical process? Yes, exactly. It's a linear process. Okay, so a linear process means you have a starting point and you have a finish point. Okay, if you have a cyclical process, that means that it's a cycle. So the process starts again. Okay, so for example, if you have the water cycle, you start with the water in the sea, up into the sea, it rains, and then it comes down and back to the sea. So it's going round in a cycle. Okay, 
So, the, but this one is a linear, so we have a start point and a finish point, okay? All right, um, so if we have a look in the cement production first, how many steps are we looking at in the cement production? We always have a bit of a, <laughs> yes, good, four. I think we can call it four, it's four or five. It depends, you know, some of them are kind of sub steps. Um, I, we've gone for four, okay? We have the crushing, the mixing, the rotating, and then the grinding, okay? So yes, Dimitri, very good, four to five, yeah? Okay, um, what's the first step in the process? Hi, John. Okay, good, so the crushing is our first step, and what's the last process in the concrete production? Okay, in the in the concrete, remember that one comes out. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, we're packaging, but then we go on to the concrete production. Then what do we do? We're mix. Yeah, we're mixing. Okay, so that's the last, going to be the last step in your process. Okay, so remember it's a linear process. You have a starting point and you have an end point. Okay. Yes, exactly, Alexis. It's rotating. Okay. All right, um, so this is true of all of the processes. What tense do you need to use to describe the process? Okay, good, yeah, so we got it together. Yes, present simple, okay? That is the only tense that you need to use, okay? And that's gonna be true of all of the processes. And that's right, Nodrubim, yeah. And also you're going to be using mainly passive. So present simple and the passive voice, okay? That's what the examiners are gonna be looking for, that you can do that. Keep it in the simple form, don't use anything in the continuous form, okay? Uh, yes. Oh, hello, Cleantads. Remember you from last time? Yeah, all of the processes use present simple. Okay. If they are man made processes, you're going to be using pretty much all passives. Okay. If it's a natural process, then you'll be using more of a mix of active and passive. Okay. But seeing as this is a man made uh, process, we are going to be using all of the passive forms, okay? Um, in terms of thinking about it as one or two process, we're gonna look at that at the moment, okay? So just wait for a second uh, for me to do that, okay? So have a think about it and uh, before you start and then you will have, um, you know, you'll have a much better idea of how to do it, okay? So uh, let's carry on. So the structure, this is the same structure for all the academic um, uh, task ones, yeah, okay. Um, so we have the introduction, we have the overview, and then we have the body, okay. Um, the body, it's, it's always quite good if you can divide the body into two paragraphs, okay. Um, but it's not, the paragraphs are not as important as they are in task two, okay? So don't worry about that too much. Sometimes it will be clear that there are two sections, so you can put each section in a separate paragraph. Uh, but if it's not that clear, don't worry about using too many paragraphs in the body, okay? Uh, we'll have a look at the grammar in a minute, Abjit, yeah? Uh, so in the introduction, you just state what the task is. So quite simply, you are saying the same thing as what's in the task question, but using different types of language. Okay, we're going to have a look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. Okay, uh, then separate paragraph. Very important that the overview is in a separate paragraph. Okay. Um, and that is the summary, the highlights, if you like, of the process. So if you had to describe it in one sentence, what would you say? Okay. Um, then you have the body. The body is where you put the details. 
So in the case of the process, you will be describing each step in turn. Okay, so a logical progression, first step through to the last step. Okay. Uh, with as many details as possible. You don't have to know any more that, than you know, what is in the picture. You don't have to add any more information. In fact, don't add any more information. Only put what you can see in the pictures, okay? Um, I would keep the overview and the introduction separate, okay? It's, it's just easier for the examiner to see this is my overview, okay, clearly there. So I, I would always put the overview in a separate paragraph, okay? That would make more sense, all right? Uh, yes, there will be an example at the end, okay? Don't worry, you just gotta give me a moment, okay? So in this case, the body is the detail, the specific steps, um, using a set of sequencing words to describe each of the steps, okay? Which again, we will look at in a moment, okay? So let's look at the introduction first. So as I said, you've got your question, all you need to do is to write that in different ways, okay? So, um, yes, thank you, Ahmed, <laughs> a bit of patience. Um, so how can we paraphrase? What are the different ways that we can paraphrase? Oh, Alexis, you got it all there. <laughs> Very good. So uh, we can use synonyms, we can use different words, but that's not the only way that you can paraphrase. And if you spend, you know, if you focus too much on synonyms, it can get a bit difficult, but we can also, we can paraphrase the grammar. So you can change the word order, you can change the form of the words, you can change active to passive and passive to active, okay? Um, I'll come to that in a minute, Attila. If you can put for the task one, the body can all be in one paragraph. It's okay, it's not gonna be a big problem. If you have two different uh, charts or two different processes, then you would want to put each one in a separate paragraph. Okay, um, so take the task question and paraphrase it, but don't just use synonyms, use uh, grammatical paraphrasing as well. Okay, um, so let's have a look at that. So grammar and synonyms, don't put any detail in the introductory. You can just say how many steps there are, but you don't want to put any detail. Okay. So let's have a go at paraphrasing. Um, so in the task question, it says shows. So what can we put in that? Yes, okay, very good. Illustrates works very, very well. Yeah, depicts also is a very good idea. Demonstrates, uh, represents. All of those are good words that you can use, okay? Uh, then we've got stages. Okay, Christos, very good. And Buana, you're all already ahead of me. So the steps. Uh, phases is another good word that you can use. There you go, Alexis. So steps, stages, phases. So you've got enough, you know, flexibility there to have some uh, synonyms as you go through. Um, and then we've got cement making process. Okay, yes, yeah, so we can say production, we can say manufacturing. Um, so, you know, in this case, we've changed uh, everything around, okay? Or you could say the process of making cement, just showing the examiner that you're able to change the language and keep the meaning the same and keep the accuracy there, okay? So, uh, then we move on, okay? And then how that cement is then used to, so in the task question, we've got produce. So what can we, okay, perfect. Yeah, we could say manufacture or make, okay. Manufacture is a little bit more academic, so that would be a good word to use, okay. For, okay, Alexis, you're heading me again. So rather than building purposes, we could say construction. Okay, 
So we just made a few changes there, but everything's accurate. So we've shown the examiner that we're able to use synonyms, we're able to use paraphrasing, okay? The introductory sentence should just be one sentence, okay? You don't need to write more than one sentence, to be honest. If you're writing more than that, you're probably adding detail that isn't necessary, okay? So keep the introduction to one sentence, maximum two sentences, but I really can't see a situation where you would need to write two sentences, okay? Uh, yeah, that's very good. That's very nice, Dinesh, that works well. Yeah, no, keep it small, keep it very small, very simple. It is really just a paraphrase of the task question, okay? Yes, one sentence, okay? Complex sentence, but one sentence, all right? It's enough. All right, exactly, Christina, concise and simple. It's exactly what you want for your introduction, okay? Um, then we move on to the overview, okay? Now you can put the overview after the introduction or you can put it at the end of your answer. Generally, we put it after the introduction, but it doesn't matter. It's perfectly okay in both of those places, okay? Um, Yes, Dimitri, transforming, well, from active to passive or passive to active would be uh, an example of grammar information, okay? Uh, so let's look at the overview. So we're gonna look at the band descriptors first um, because I think it gives you a very good idea of, um, you know, of what they're looking for. So if we look just at the band five, you can see the second thing that's in red. We'll come to the first thing in a moment. No clear overview, okay? So that means that you haven't put the overview in a separate paragraph, okay? So that's the first thing that you need to do. Put the overview in a separate paragraph and begin with overall. Don't have to think about anything else, just begin with overall, okay? Uh, the other thing, um, the other way that you avoid it being vague is you have to keep it very much between main ideas in the overview, detail in the body. Okay, that's another thing that they are looking for. Okay, so if you don't separate those out clearly, if you have detail in the overview or if you have um, overall ideas in the body, then you are going to lose marks, okay? A lot of marks. Um, the first one is also very important. It says recounts detail mechanically, okay? So if you are recounting detail mechanically, it means you are just listing things without using any kind of interesting expressions or structures. Okay, so again, if you do that, if you just say the first step is this, the second step is this, the third step is this, then you know you're going to get no more than a band five for task uh, achievement, and then it's very hard to uh, get that up to maybe a seven if that's what you're looking. So don't just list what happens that you need to, um, to make sure you're writing it in an interesting way. Yeah, exactly, you can't just name them. They're looking for the grammar. So you have to provide them with the grammar, okay? Slow down, guys, everybody just relax. <laughs> it's all gonna come. If you ask all the questions now, I'm not gonna get to the end, okay? So um, that would get you only a band five. Getting a band seven, that's what you have to do. So a clear overview, separate paragraph, only the key trends, no detail, okay? Only the key trends, no detail in the overview. This goes for all of the task once, okay? And people make, often make a mistake with things like the line graphs and the charts. They're putting detail in the overview, it's just mixed up, okay? So then that is quite confusing, okay? So 
uh, let's have a look at the overview, okay? So again, you can put it after the introduction, but you can also put it at the end of your answer, okay? Yeah, so key stages with the process, you want to say how many stages there are, okay? Put how many stages in the overview and say what the first stage is and say what the last stage is, okay? So it's, it's really, really straightforward for the process. How many stages? What's the first one? What's the last one? Okay, so um, let's have a look in a moment and say what the purpose is. So what are you producing? Okay, in this case, if it's a manufacturing process, what is the end? end product okay so um yeah it's good to say overall or um you can say in general or in the process you can say in order to yes thank you neo because you're giving the purpose at the beginning okay so in order to make cement which is the first one how many raw ingredients do we start with okay so we start with the two raw ingredients Okay, and then we're just going to mention those. So the two raw ingredients are limestone and clay. Okay, very good. Limestone and clay. Um, in, we already talked about this, didn't we? So yeah, in four, you could split it into five if you want. Okay, so in four stages, we've gone to. Uh, before being, what's the final? end thing that we're looking at in this case. Okay, I remember we're talking about our passives here. Okay, good, yes, bagged or packed would work. Yeah, before being bagged, okay. Uh, so that's the cement, the cement is then what? What do we do with the cement? Mm -hmm. Okay, remember now we're moving on to the concrete production. Okay, you could use used. Okay, you could say the cement is used to make concrete, uh, but then it's mixed. We say it's mixed in specific proportions with how many other materials? Okay, good. Three other materials to produce concrete. Okay, so we've said very generally how we make cement and then how we make concrete okay no detail but we've done the first stage which is the two raw ingredients and we've ended with the last stage which is mixing the cement in order to make the concrete okay um so again the overview is quite short two sentences you're unlikely to use any more than two sentences for the overview, okay? Now, the percentages are detail, so you don't put the percentages in the overview, okay? No detail in the overview. That's for the body. Again, if you did that, you would be mixing the overview and the body. That would be a band five, okay? Yep. It tell her only two sentences. The overview is very short, okay? Maybe three sentences, but again, I think it's unlikely, okay? You are only saying what the very overall picture is of this process, okay? All right, yes, exactly, Liman. There are two sentences, but they're both complex sentences okay so you're displaying your grammar ability in the overview okay um it, i think it's good to write overall um or here we've got in order to but again making it very clear that this is the overview i would tend to use overall yeah just to be a hundred percent clear okay um so yeah when we've got good expressions here so we've got in order to We've got then, we've got to produce. So we've got a nice mix of, um, of the grammar there. Okay, yes, Safino, no details in the overview. Okay, 
And yes, very good, Adela. It's an overview. It's not a conclusion. You don't give any opinion. You don't give any analysis. Okay. It's a pure description. Yeah. Okay. So we've done our, our introduction, which was one sentence, complex sentence. Overview, two sentences, complex sentences. Okay. So then we move on to the body. Okay. So in the body, you're going to describe each stage in detail. Okay. That's going to be the first thing. Um, there's never that many stages in the process. So you will want to do each separate stage. Yeah. Don't miss anything out. Okay. Um, the, the vocabulary that they are looking for is the sequencing words, okay? To begin with, after that, following this, those kind of things, okay? Yeah, it's only here that we have the details, okay? Um, as well as the sequencing words, they're looking for you to be able to use the passive correctly. So those are the key things that we're looking for in the process, sequencing words, and uh, passive voice, okay? Um, and as I said, no mechanical reporting, okay? So you need to use different structures, different types of grammar, things like that to get a, a good score for your task response, okay? So um, in terms of the body, as I said, um, well, it will be present and passive. They're two separate things, okay? Please, guys, can you please not put any personal information down, okay? We're not responsible for that. Please do not put personal information in the chat, okay? This is not the place for it, all right? So in this case, we have two clear different um, processes. We've got cement production and concrete production. Okay, so in that case, I think it's very easy to divide them into two separate paragraphs. Okay, if there isn't an obvious place to divide the two paragraphs, you can use one paragraph. Okay, or you can just decide, you know, somewhere in the middle, I'm going to make um, a divide. Okay, but I wouldn't worry about it too much unless there's clearly two separate things that you're describing. And then I think it's, you know, it's easy to move from one paragraph to the second paragraph in the body when you move on to the second chart or the second diagram, okay? Um, yeah, I can go back to that in a moment, all right? Um, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, so though, though this is what we're looking at for the body. So don't panic too much about the paragraphs, but if there's two separate parts, obviously, then use two separate paragraphs, okay? Um, so as we said, we are looking at the passive here, okay? But we also want to mix up our grammar quite a lot. So we don't just want to list passives we need to use a few different phrases, okay? Uh, so we need to put these verbs at the side into the right place in the right form. Yeah, okay, so if we look at the first one, yeah, so involves crushing, okay? So we've got to use an ing form after involves, okay? Um, okay, Daniel, if there are two separate parts, clearly or two separate charts two separate diagrams then you can use one paragraph for each diagram okay or one paragraph for each chart if it's just one diagram one chart you can put it into one body paragraph or you can just split it more or less evenly in the middle but it's not going to be a major problem, okay? So um, we're gonna crush it into a powder and then what do we need to put? Okay, which is then, yeah, combined in a mixer. I'm sorry, Attila, I missed what you said. So, um, okay, Shabam, really, um, can you please not put personal information here, yeah? 
all right, um, in the body. Uh, sorry, Atelier, can you just ask the question again? I missed that, okay. Um, you could say it's passed into a mixer. That would work, passed would work, or passes through, okay. Um, and then this powder, remember we're using a passive, it's being done to it, is passed through. Good, thank you, Kuang, that's very good. This powder is passed through a rotating heater before, get your passives right, guys, here, you think about it, think about it, I haven't got, I don't think, anybody's being oh there we go almost being ground okay grind is an in irregular verb okay so before being ground into cement all right so and then the final product okay is put into bags ready for use okay um so We've got here a mix of different structures. We're using a lot of passive. Always need to use the passive in the man-made process, okay? But we also have different types of language here. So if we look at the linking expressions, so we've got the first stage, we've got then, we've got before, and we've got the final product, okay? So we've got a good range of linking expressions. Try and avoid repeating any of the expressions that you use, okay? We've also got a range of grammar here. So we've got which, got a relative clause. Um, we've got before being ground. So we've got a preposition followed by uh, a gerund. Um, then we've got the passive. So we've got a whole range of different structures and forms here which is what you need to get a good score okay we're not just listing things mechanically we're using our language to describe it in a in a more interesting way okay so this is your first part okay it's not very long um it's probably about 40 words something like that okay um and that's all you've done. You've basically included all of the stages there. Okay. So as it says here, find an appropriate place to start a new paragraph. I'm just going to take a sip, guys. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a sore throat. Thank you. Um, so here it's clear. We've got cement production. We've got concrete production. Okay. So we can easily split our body into two paragraphs between the first part and the second part, okay? Um, okay, Valentin, you just saw this is body A, okay? So it's three sentences, maybe about, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> maybe about, um, you know, 40 words, something like that, okay? Two to three sentences, basically describing each of the steps in turn, but making sure that you are changing your grammar as you go through, okay? Yeah, I would say three or four sentences, okay? So uh, then we begin the second one. So now we're gonna look at the concrete production. Um, another thing to bear in mind with the process, well, with, with all of the task ones, is anything that is on the picture, you need to include in your uh, detail. So that means in the body, okay? Uh, so in this case, we have percentages related to the different components of concrete production. So we need to make sure we include those percentages, okay? Sometimes you have something like a temperature, so make sure you include that temperature. Sometimes you might need to, um, there might be a period of time, so make sure that you include the period of time, okay? Um, so if it's on the picture, you need to put it in your writing, in the body, not in the overview, okay? Yeah, you need to write the percentages, okay? I can't answer all the questions, Ayusha, okay? It's going up very quickly. I'm trying to answer what I can, okay? 
Um, I'm only going to answer questions in chat that are rele relevant to what we're doing at the moment. Okay. Um, so, um, how are we going to start our second body paragraph? Okay. Two. Okay, good. So to make, to produce, to manufacture. Again, if you use produce before, use manufacture now. If you use manufacture, use make. Make sure that you're not repeating the same vocabulary. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, well, prepare. Don't, I wouldn't say create. Create is something more like a piece of art, okay? You don't really create cement or concrete. You just you produce, you manufacture, and you, um, and you make, okay? But create is, is really a different idea, okay? Um, okay, so the cement is added to a large machine, okay? Uh, known as a, as a what? Yeah, okay, a good, okay, a concrete mixer, get the full word, make sure you got it um, accurate is important as well, okay. Uh, along with, okay, three other ingredients, okay, three other ingredients. Now we're doing the detail, so, you know, we know that we can put the detail in there. So what's the first of the other ingredients? which is the small stones, good, yeah, the gravel, okay, accounts for, okay, so it says 50%, if we want to really use, okay, very good, Nia, if you really want to show that you've got the language, don't write 50%, that's too easy, write half of the mixture, okay, so again, you know, you're changing it a little bit. You're showing what you can do. Um, so you don't have to do it with everything, but it's very good to show with the percentages. This is the same for the pie charts and things like that. If there's percentages, write at least some of them as fractions, okay? Um, because it's it's you know, I, anyone can write the percentages, but if you can use the fractions, you're showing, exactly, you're showing a, a higher level of language ability, okay? Um, so, and then we're adding the other ones. So how are we going to join this information here? Okay, half of the mixture. Okay, thank you, Lobisi. So while the remaining ingredients are Okay, yes, exactly. Sand, cement, and water. And sometimes we can just put the figures in brackets if we don't want to make it part of the sentence, okay? Um, yeah, you don't really need to put respectively because you've got them next to each other. Uh, but in another way, you could probably do that, okay? So we've got all our percentages there. You could use a quarter for the sand. That would be great as well, yeah, okay? And then what does the mixer do? What does the mixer do? <laughs> okay, somebody wrote, yes, thank you. Shares on rotates, okay? Don't use mixes. You don't wanna say the mixer mixes. Uh, it's turns or rotates, yeah, okay? Um, so again, you're changing the language up to combine these materials. And how are we going to get to our last stage? Uh, you could say there, but yeah, I mean, yeah. And here we are using ultimately, okay? But you could say also finally or, you know, in the end, yeah? Um, or thereby would work, thereby producing concrete. Okay, oh, very good, Norderbring. That's exactly what I was going to put. Um, yeah, so again, Okay, if we look at that, we've got uh, a mix of sequencing expressions. Uh, so we've got to produce, okay, we've got um, uh, ultimately, we've also got different, uh, not lastly, that doesn't work quite work, okay. Um, and I wouldn't use eventually either because eventually means over a long period of time. 
and this is not something that requires a long period of time. Um, in some of the natural processes though, um, using eventually works very well. Um, hence, the rotation relative to commands, hence producing, yeah, that works, that works, finally works as well. Okay. Uh, notice also, again, we've got different sentence structures here. Uh, we've got like in order to, we've got while joining two sentences together. Uh, we've got producing, so we've got a participle clause, we've got an ing form. Um, so we've got a real mix of different types of sentence structures. Even though it seems quite sort of basic in terms of a process, we're using our language as much as we can to show the examiner and to get those good scores, okay? Um, so we have here all together, yeah, in order to produce, so as to produce, that is the full um, description. It's 151 words. So it's only just over 150, but that's completely fine. Um, we have our introduction, we have our overview, and then we have our two body paragraphs because we have two different stages, main stages of the process. Okay. Um, and that's it. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Okay. No, no conclusion in task one. Okay. No conclusion in task one. You overview, which is the main trends, no analysis, no opinion. Okay, very, very important to remember that. Um, so general overall tips, and then we'll go to Q&A. Look at the diagram first, okay? Don't start writing immediately, really just take a couple of minutes, go through it, follow the arrows and get a good idea in your head of what's going on. Sometimes these things can look a bit confusing the first time you look at them, but once you've followed it through, it will be fine, okay? Um, okay, keep it to 20 minutes, as we said before. Uh, don't waste time counting your words. Be aware of what 150 words looks like uh, in your handwriting. You can practice on IELTS exam paper. You can download exactly what you're going to see on the exam. And you can write on that, and then you're going to see exactly what 150 words looks like, and you don't have to do that. Please stop writing the same thing, Ayusha, and I will answer it when I've finished, okay? Possibly. Um, so don't waste time counting your words, okay? That really, you don't really have time for that. But do spend a couple of minutes um, going through it checking some vocabulary, checking the grammar points, making sure you've got everything accurate, okay? Uh, yeah, download the official answer sheet, practice on that, and you will have a good idea, okay? And finally, do as many different types of diagrams and other task ones as you can find. There's loads of them out there. There's loads of websites that have example tasks. The more you do, the less likely you are going to be shocked when you get into the exam. Try man-made processes, try natural processes, try cycles, try linear processes. Okay, the more you do, the, the better it's going to be. Um, I mean, you can just type in task one IELTS. Um, IELTS online tests, of course, has a huge range of tests. Um, there, you can go onto the IELTS.org, you can go onto the British Council. Uh, there's, there's a whole range of them that you can try, okay? Um, all right, so um, I just have to say a couple of things before we go to the questions, okay? Um, so if you would like to have your speaking or your writing uh, personally evaluated, there is that service um, that we can do for you. It might be me, it might be somebody else. Um, and it is a paid service naturally, but you will get um, quite detailed feedback on your um, writing or speaking, depending on how you want to do it, okay? Um, 
this particular presentation and all of the webinars that we've done, okay, they will be up on Facebook, they will be up on YouTube, so you can go back, you can check it again. Uh, you can also on Facebook ask questions if you haven't had your question answered. Uh, I can't actually send it to you, but if somebody can put it in chat, that would be quite useful because I, I can't write in chat while I'm presenting. Thank you very much. I can't see who did that because your name's gone, but I appreciate that very, very much. Thank you. Um, and on the, um, uh, on the website as well, there are short little videos which give you some tips on the listening and the reading, okay? Um, so that's just some things that you can do. Yes, um, Sherzo, there have been many Task 2 webinars. There will be many Task 2 webinars coming up. So just keep your eye out for that, okay? Um, and go back through and see if you can find them there, okay? Um, so I'm going to have a look. So thank you very much for listening, first of all. I hope that was really, really helpful, okay? Um, and now we're going to have a look at some of the Q and E's, uh, Q and A's even, okay? Um, so uh, somebody's asked about, is there proper attire to wear to the speaking? No, <laughs> don't worry about what you wear when you go to the speaking, it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, nobody's paying any attention to that. Don't wear sunglasses, because uh, that's just rude, okay? Um, okay, these kind of general questions, guys, like how can I get a 7.5 in writing? How can I get a 7 in speaking? It's really not possible for me to answer that in a general way. So if you do want to know how to, where you are at the moment in terms of your level um, and how you could improve, then you really need to get the, you know, the, the personal feedback, okay? Um, so that's something that, you, that I would recommend if you really want to know, you know, exactly how well you're doing compared to what you need to do. Okay. Um, yes, as I said, the presentation will be on YouTube. It will be on Facebook at the end. Okay. Um, okay. Christos is saying in the body paragraphs, do you necessarily have to analyze your overview points or you can add um, information? Um, I'm not quite sure you mean, yeah, basically you are, you're talking about everything in detail, okay? So you're turning your, your overview, which is your key trends, into all of the separate steps and everything in those steps that's mentioned, like temperatures, percentages, amounts of time. Okay, but you don't add any opinion or any analysis. Okay, the task one academic is only description, nothing else. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, so this, the, the, the structure that I gave you, the introduction, overview, body paragraphs, that, is, that works for all academic task one questions. Okay, the chart, the map, the diagram, everything task one academic has the same structure. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Um, do you remember, remember to change the form, please? Um, yes, yeah, so one way of paraphrasing and one way of changing things uh, is to change the form of the word. Okay, so if it's a noun in the question, use it as a verb. If it's a verb, use it as a noun or an adjective, okay? So it's another way of paraphrasing, it's another way of changing uh, your language. So you're not focusing too much on synonyms, sorry. But you're looking at other ways of changing the language, okay? I think it's a big mistake to really just think, oh, I've got to use, a different word every time and people are you know are going crazy trying to find different synonyms to use think about other ways of doing that think about changing the word formation 
the order of the sentence, the type of structure, the passive, the active, things like that. Yeah, okay. Um, misspelling word. Um, yes, Attila, spelling is part of the lexical resource. Um, you don't have to be 100%, right? A band seven could have maybe a couple of words spelt wrongly um doesn't but they're still you know it's still possible to understand what you're saying um down to a band five would probably have quite a few spelling mistakes and in some cases the spelling mistake might mean it's not possible to um you know to to understand the word that you're saying but you know even band seven there might be one or two spelling mistakes and, and you could still get a band uh, a band seven okay um, Christos says, does the examiner penalize you for writing 149 words? Um, in fact, it has to be, if I remember this rightly, it's actually if you are 10 words under, so you could get away with 140 um, and you wouldn't lose any marks, but then you would start to lose a lot of marks and it's risky. So I would really, you know, try and make sure you're over 150. It is very, very important, okay? Uh, but if you were one, 149, 148, it's still going to be okay, okay? Um, someone's asking about webinar about the bar and pie chart. Uh, we do have a webinar with complex charts. Um, Christina, so if you want to look at the upcoming webinars, that might be coming up, but we do definitely have a webinar where we talk about having two uh, charts that you have to talk about um, at the same time. Basically speaking, if you get a task one and you've got, say, a table and a line graph, talk about the table first completely, then next paragraph in your body talk about the line graph in your overview have an overview for the table and an overview for the line graph that's basically in a nutshell what you have to do with that okay um Raphael's asking how can i increase my vocabulary um reading very, very important, reading as much as possible, uh, watching documentaries. So get exposed to new vocabulary, then record that vocabulary, particularly using things like spider diagrams is very good, you know, or mind maps, things like that, and then use it. Okay, so produce it, start writing it, start um, making sentences. So find it, record it, use it, okay? That's basically how you need to do, okay? Um, somebody whose name is in Greek, so I'm sorry, I can't read it. Um, <clears throat> but can we write short forms in, <clears throat> sorry. Um, <clears throat> no, basically in the IELTS writing, if you're doing academic, <laughs> thank you, Mahesh. <laughs> Um, if you are doing the academic IELTS, all your writing is going to be formal academic writing. So you cannot use short forms, you can't use abbreviations, you can't use contractions, okay? <clears throat> Full form of every word that you write, okay? Um, Akash is, writing, is asking about the overview and the conclusion, okay? Um, task one overview. Overview is the main trends and you begin your overview with overall. Um, and it's a summary of the key trends and it's just a description. Your conclusion is the task two. The task two essay, you will write a conclusion. You will begin in conclusion or to conclude and it will be your opinion about the subject that you are writing, okay? So they're very, very different, okay? Um, if it's a graph, Dewani is asking, if it's a graph of a certain activity over the past period, what would be the tone of reporting? 
Uh, I'm guessing you mean a tense. Um, if the graph begins and ends in the past, so for example, 1990 to 2000, then everything is going to be in the past simple, okay? Everything is going to be in the past simple, okay? Um, Anonymous is asking about stammering. Um, if you have some kind of um, issue like stammering or something like that or stuttering um, or anything that might affect your speaking or doing the written exam then you need to tell when you when you register for the test you need to tell IELTS you need to tell the test center in advance and you need to have a note from your doctor to prove okay then they will take it into consideration but you need to do it early and you need to make it, do it formally, okay? And then you will be fine, all right? <clears throat> um, let's have a look. How do we use tense? Um, okay, different tenses required. This is the last question I'm gonna answer. Different tenses required for different task ones, okay? The diagram will be present simple. The uh, all the, the charts and the line graphs usually in the past simple, but you need to look at the time period and be careful. Sometimes they go into the future, in which case you need to use future forms. Um, the map will usually be present perfect and passive forms, okay? Um, and um, was there anything left? No, that's all of it. So those are the tenses you need to think about, okay? Guys, we've gone over. I know I didn't answer everybody's questions, but there's a lot of questions. Please put them on the Facebook and you will get answers from there as well. Um, this will be on Facebook and it will be on YouTube tomorrow. Okay, so you can see it then. All right. Um, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for all of your suggestions. Thank you very much for all of your comments and questions. Um, I wish you the best of luck if you have your exam coming up. I really, really do. My fingers are crossed. Um, and if it's not coming up very, very soon, hopefully we'll see you again in the next webinar. Okay. So take care, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.